Good morning. Welcome back to Botany. Today we are going to talk about grass. And the grass family includes a lot of different types of plants that vary quite a bit. And we're going to find out more about them. When you think about grass, you might think about that green stuff, all those tiny little green plants growing in your front yard or your backyard. People go out to mow the lawn. And interestingly, what they are doing is they're replicating animals eating the lawn. That grass that's in the front yard or backyard, if you have it, is actually designed its, itself to become a plant that grows more the more it's eaten. In other words, it senses when it's being eaten from the top and it keeps most of its functional organs that it needs to survive in the bottom part of that grass. Uh, so what it wants to do when it feels that something is eating it, like when the lawnmower comes and chops the top off that grass, it just assumes that some cows or goats or buffalo just came through and ate the tops off it. And it actually grows more of itself. So mowing the lawn is actually good for your lawn. Cutting the top of that grass tricks it into thinking an animal came and ate it. I mean, it's even better if an animal actually just does come and eat it, and some people do mow their lawns that way. They get uh, goats or cows or something just as a novelty, and they have them come, and uh, some ranches do that as well. They plant grasses, and they send out their cows, goats, bison, what have you, to go graze. Uh, but there are plenty of other different types of grasses. In fact, you've probably had some contact with grasses today. One grass, in particular, uh, the cereals, is a number of different types of this family of grasses that we also call grains. And things like wheat, if you had any wheat today, or things like rice, or barley, or oats, or uh, sorghum, or there are so many different, most of the grains that we eat, uh, corn, uh, most of those grains are in the cereal family and their grasses. And there are a few grains that are not, like uh, quinoa is one of those grains, buckwheat is another one of those grains. They're not exactly in the grass family, but they're like a sideways grass. They're related, they're pretty similar. Um, we call them pseudo cereals because they're kind of like a cereal. Um, and this shifted the entire world. These, these grasses did for people and also for the world itself and for the cultivation of these grasses, because, you know, for thousands and thousands of years, we lived in the world and we thrived and we existed and we wandered nomadically, which means we went from one place to another in search of food. And when food got scarce because we were hunter-gatherers, we would hunt for food. And if we hunted some animals or whatever we could find, we would forage. We would go around finding what food was available, and then we would go on. And sometimes food wasn't enough, uh, especially come winter in some areas where it was much colder. It's going to be harder to find more abundant food sources. But eventually, people caught on, and they started to study things like this, and they uh, looked around them and said, hey, you know what we could do is we could actually stay in one place if we grew these things. And it was this original idea that they could grow the plants intentionally. They could figure out, they could find these seeds and throw the seeds into the ground. They could even clear the ground out and create usable farmland. And then they could um, plant seeds in there. And the easiest to grow were these grasses because grasses take very easily. You just drop a few seeds in the ground, they usually grow fairly well, and they're pretty resistant to all kinds of things. Uh, so that was what people first started doing, was growing these grasses. And this led to this led to cities. This, these were the first cities where people were like, hey, we should all hang out and grow things together and help each other out. And they did. They grew things. And then that also led to animal husbandry and uh, people raising animals uh, for food and also people raising animals as pets because they wanted to protect their food um, from from pests so you know they didn't want 
rats um, coming around their storage containers and eating their food or, or you know, leaving waste materials around to, to make their food toxic. They don't want the rats like pooping where they eat and have, store their food. So they would get dogs and cats to keep these rats away. Um, so these grasses that, that people originally decided to plant, they also realized that they could do other things with uh, these, these grasses. They could brew the wheat into beer, which uh, was a really important staple for people back then because mostly people just needed calories to survive. Uh, but they also needed clean sources of water to drink. And um, beer has a little bit of alcohol in it, which actually kills some bacteria. And so for people who hadn't invented running water yet and didn't know uh, how to get really good clean water, they realized that they could actually clean uh, their, get a nice drink, a clean drink from drinking beer. And so... Uh, you know, this is an important food staple, and it lasted for a long time. It was a way that you could make your wheat last all through the winter uh, as well. When you're not going to be able to harvest wheat, you could still have this stored beer in different containers and be able to have that as a food source. Um, and, you know, you could also, um, when they figured out they could mill the flour, they could, you know, the flour, it's at the end of the, the stalk of the grass and um, there's a husk on the outside. Now what we see when we open up a bag of flour is uh, the smashed up version that they've taken the husk off and they've taken the germ off um, and they've got just that, that wheat kernel that's on the inside and they've dried it and then they've smashed it into a fine powder and rolled it out and then uh, collected all that and put it into a bag for you to use. So what we have uh, doesn't look like it really came from a, from a grass, but it did. There was a whole bunch of, at one point, grass growing in a field, and that became all these little wheat kernels, and then, uh, you know, those were smashed up, and now they're easy for you to use. When we go to make our bread, usually we don't have to husk the wheat or grind it, um, you know, but not that long ago, you would have had to do all of that. You would have had to grow your wheat from a seed, just like that story of the little red hen, she grows her wheat from the seed, and then the wheat, uh, she waters it, she takes care of it, and you know she um, takes care of those pests that are around it, and the weeds, uh, make sure that it's growing nice and strong, and then when it's ready, she harvests it and takes it to the mill and grinds it, husks it, and uh, and then it's ready to be turned into whatever you want to turn it into, whatever type uh, of food you want to turn that wheat into. And it could be so many different things. It could be Wheaties. It could be your cereal. It could be that raisin bran is going to use uh, wheat. A little bit of sugar. You cook up a, a flake, and then you can eat that crunchy flake, and they toss raisins, and uh, some sugar goes on the raisins. And guess what else is a grass? Sugar. <laughs> that thing that most of you, I'm sure, love to eat actually comes from a grass. You have this tall sort of woody stalk of sugar cane, I don't know if any of you have eaten sugar cane raw, but um, it's good. It's it's um, very crunchy, but there's a lot of fiber in it. And the way that they get the sugar out is that they actually burn the sugar cane fields, and then they hack down the, the sugar cane with machetes, and then they put all these long, woody stalks of, of grass into a truck, and they take that over to a factory where they smash them flat. Uh, they do a number of different things to the sugar. Uh, you know, sometimes they just boil up the sap and you get this thick, dark molasses that is actually filled with some uh, nutrients your body needs. It's got some iron and some potassium in there. Uh, but also, um, they continue to cook that sugar down uh, and they can make a brown sugar uh, when it's nice and dry instead of, that, instead of that black, dark, thick, tarry liquid molasses. Uh, they can cook the sugar further down into this brown sugar, which is like a darker form of sugar. It's a little bit less processed, uh, you know, or they can uh, continue to, with some sugars, they may actually bleach your sugar uh, by, you know, turning it whiter and whiter. 
And uh, in many countries, you don't have this process. Um, you know, some countries have cubes of sugar, you know, that they will have processed. Some countries have cones of thick sugar or rock sugar. Uh, you know, we, we tend to have pretty tame, pure white sugar that's had all the nutrients, all the good stuff that actually was in that raw sugar cane has been just beaten out of it. So it's not even necessarily that sugar is so bad for you. And we will get into that in seventh grade, but I'm going to tell you a hundred different ways that sugar is bad for you. Sorry. We can find other sweet things to eat, but sugar is really one of the worst things. It's, it's literally like eating poison because it does poison your body in a number of different ways. But I know it tastes really good. Um, the sugar cane itself is, is not so bad. Uh, you know, when they when they first squeeze that, that sugar cane juice, they can press that, that sugar cane flat, turn it into a juice. Uh, you can get a cup of it sometimes at farmer's markets in different places. It's really good stuff. You know, it's like drinking coconut water. Uh, it's, it's pretty good for your body. Uh, it's not like eating a bunch of sugar. It's just a sweet drink. Uh, but the more they process that, really the worse that is for your body. Uh, and it competes for things in your body, and it breaks down poorly in your gut, and it, it does all kinds of really hazardous stuff uh, to, to you. So, yeah, that is another grass. So you have all these grains that are grasses. You have all these, uh, you have sugar that is grass. That's another, pretty much a major staple of the human diet at this point, unfortunately. Um, you know, but then you also have bamboo as a grass. And... Uh, Bamboo, yeah, bamboo is an interesting one. You know, some of us are late bloomers in life. I was kind of a late bloomer. I would wait to do a thing, and then I would do it pretty well. But sometimes it would take me a long time, like longer than other kids, to uh, to do things. I was a late talker. I think I, I may have told you the story before, but I didn't. I didn't say anything until I was about three and a half years old. Uh, you know, and then my first my first sentence, my grandma coaxed me into talking because she had. She had bagels with cream cheese and lox. So my first words were, may I please have some more bagels and cream cheese with lox? Um, so I was a late bloomer. Bamboo is a great story of the late bloomer. You know, here you have a thing that it's very prolific. It grows a lot. Bamboo, if you grow it in your yard, is one of the hardest things to get out of your yard because it can grow in different ways. It can grow from seed uh, or it can grow underground it's got this root system like other grasses these things love to grow underground just grow more grasses so bamboo you'll see all kinds of shoots around the bamboo and when bamboo first shoots up uh, it creates well bamboo shoots and if you've ever eaten some chinese foods a lot of um, a lot of people in china eat bamboo shoots it's the thick stump that's about to become a giant bamboo and all the nutrition is densely kind of packed in there. And they cut these things down when they're young and eat them because there's a bunch of them. They're a very abundant. Uh, and some of the cultures that are, that are there, especially the ones that are outside the city, still rely on bamboo as a major food source. So why is bamboo a late bloomer? Well, you know, it only grows a few inches per year. And then uh, after four, five, six years, it suddenly grows very, very tall, very fast. Um, it can actually grow at eight inches per day, which is which is kind of crazy to think. Humans on a, on a good year, when we're young, when we're kids, we'll grow maybe a few inches per year. Um, but bamboo will grow eight inches per every day uh, up until it reaches a certain height once it gets the right amount of water once it gets the right amount of nutrition once it's getting the right stuff it just shoots up but it doesn't do that for a few years it'll be somewhat dormant for a few years and stay relatively small and then when it realizes it's the right time boom it just shoots on up and it can grow up to about 60 feet tall um, or about the size of a six or seven story building it can get really big um, and it can have a lot of kids. It just shoots out little roots um, and pops up little bamboo babies all around it. Uh, another thing that does that is bananas. And um, bananas are a grass. <laughs> uh, 
That's right, they're not a tree. We say banana trees, but actually it's a banana grass, and it's in the herb family. And um, it, it's actually a pretty interesting thing. Um, if you ever heard people say that there's a handle of bananas or a hand of bananas, uh, you know, it's got a long... Um, stalk that comes out the top and ends up becoming so heavy this purple flower grows out of it in some cultures they actually eat that flower especially vietnam uh, vietnam they and the philippines they make this uh, banana flower salad so then this uh this long stalk produces bananas that are so heavy they come out sideways the whole tree is like tipping over with the weight of these bananas and um and they grow fingers they call it a hand or a handle of bananas and then those single individual bananas they call fingers um why do they call them this uh, well there was an arabic word banan which is arabic for finger that's the origin of banana uh anyway uh grass can take many 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 different forms yes it could be in our front lawn it could be the grains that we're eating for breakfast or lunch or dinner or even a nice snack. It could be your sugary treat. Um, it could be uh, bamboo that pandas love to take down and eat, that humans love to eat those bamboo shoots. Or it could even be elephant grass, which uh, grows so tall that elephants can hide behind it. That's why they call it elephant grass. It's really tall grass, and it's still got that nice... Um, thin, pliable, malleable components so that you can walk through the elephant grass really um, without running into a woody stalk like you would walking through a bamboo forest. Well, that is it for grasses. I appreciate your ear today. Um, why don't you take a look around your environment and see where you notice a grass where you might not have noticed a grass before and you say, hey, is that a grass? Stay curious, folks. Ask yourself, what are these things? And I will see you all tomorrow.